So let's recreate the box that it sat in. It'll make it a little bit easier. I'm just going to extend not unlike what I did with the cube back over there. I have to make this three units high, but when I draw these vertical lines, I have no idea how high that is. So the box that those that octagon sat in, I'm just drawing vertical lines right now. So how high is three right here? Well, again, I have to go right back to that measuring wall. And I'm going to vanish back, or you could just trace it back too. But it's at this point that I find my three. So here's two, here's four. Halfway through will be three. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to drag the three across to that line, which it responds to. It goes here and up to three. And it's through that point that I vanish. And there you go. There's the edge of the box that that octagon sits in. And now I can just run that straight across to the vertical line that represents the front face of that. And I can run the back of it, same thing. And if you keep it light, now these two points, when I vanish through, should connect if my drafting is nice and straight. And it does. There we go there. It lines up pretty well. And now what I want to do is create that octagon shape, the same as I did down here, but in here. And as you can see, as my surfaces become closer to my horizon line, they start to foreshorten more, they start to flatten out more. So this one's going to be a little bit trickier. Here's what I do know though. I can use the information down here up above. So I know that this point down here ended up exactly on that edge right there. Great. This point ends up exactly right here on the back wall. This front point ended up on the front of the box right here. And this side point that's right here is pretty much here. A lot of foreshortening going on there, so it's probably best that I just draw a horizontal line across. And that's where it hits. And in fact, what I can do here is draw that line through there. So now I know where my center is. Now the other thing I can do, I don't actually have to draw an ellipse this time, thank goodness. Because I all I have to do at this point is draw some diagonal lines through one corner to the other, one corner to the other, and now, looking at this point down below, I'm going to elevate that point until it hits that diagonal right here. So here's point one up above, here's point one down below. Here is point two up above, here is two below, three and three. Now I have to find point four and it lives on a diagonal line which is this diagonal line right here. So up I bring it, and there is point four, and point four, I have point five, and point six, you can see down below, it lives on, point six lives on in the, that was a mistake, <laughs> point six lives on that diagonal right there. And I just elevate it to the diagonal directly above it, which is right here. There it goes six. I stop at the diagonal. There's point number six and six. Seven is obvious right here. And now eight is this guy. And he too lives on the diagonal that is down below. There's point eight. All right, my last point. I got my point number eight. I'm going to transfer it up to the diagonal directly above. And now I have my eight points. And now I'll connect the dots. There's point number eight. Super simple. And when you put tracing paper over, or you do a tonal drawing of this, and it takes away all of those construction lines, then you'll just be so happy with all of your results. You know, I am drafting fairly dark here, but it's just mainly so that you can see what it is that's going on here. 
and then back that last point. And sure enough, you have created an octagonal prism in perspective. And my sense is, is that after this point, that cylinder is going to take over. So isn't that gorgeous? Congratulate yourself for what you've just done. Okay, so now the cylinder, it's four units high and it pretty much it's if you can do <laughs> if you can do this this one is super simple so again what i'm going to do is i'm going to recreate the box that that cylinder sits in and the guidelines are going to be a little bit confusing with all of this information in the back so so stay tuned here so here's the front face of the packing box and how high is it it's four units high so one more time, there's no way that you can measure the four units here. You have to go back to the four units that represents the cylinder on that back wall. So on that back wall, this line goes back to the back wall, zero, two, and four. So it's at this point that I can use my vanishing point to extend to that box. And I'm just gonna raise that because I can see I wasn't going to make it. So from this vanishing point through four, here was four here, and out into the perspective area, and bingo, there is the top left-hand side of the packing box that contains the cylinder. And I'll do it to the other side as well. So I don't need to measure again because once I've got that measurement, I just transfer it all the way across to the rest of that box there. So this line is directly above here. I'm now going to take this point and draw a line across. And this point here can also be brought across. Looking down at the point in perspective, it's right here, just aligns with that cylinder. I just draw a guideline because I'm not too, too sure where it goes. And from this corner, I can draw the side of the box. And these two points will be directly across from one another, so I can just use my parallel rule. So there is, I'll just darken it so that you can see it a bit more. This represents the top of that box that that cylinder sits in. So let's just try to create this as simply as possible. My tangent points are right down below here. So I can draw that up. The, the circle actually widens just ever so slightly at the base. So that's the tangent point of that ellipse right there and right there. And the center point, I could run these diagonals, but you can see how foreshortened it's getting just because I'm so close to my horizon line that makes it barely easy to see the top of that cylinder there. But there is my center point right there. And in this case, it's not an octagonal or it's not an octagon shape. So I can actually draw a tidier ellipse through that point right there. But basically, I'm going to be touching here and here on that front, on that front bit there. So look at how teeny tiny this shape is right here. And this one takes special concentration as you come around. I made it hard on us by making it four units high. If I made it a little bit shorter, it would have been easier to see. But there is the top of that can. And now what I would do is just draw it straight down to the lower portion. And when I draw the cylinder or when I create a line drawing over top of this, you'll see just how all of these shapes will look in perspective, which is what I'm going to do next, is put tracing paper over top of this and create a line drawing of all of this gorgeous construction that you've just finished.